Lee is now a very healthy hurricane. Yes, it's Category 1 status as of your Wednesday evening, and it's pushing on off towards the west at about 15 miles per hour for us here. In this video, I'm going to be covering a look at the brand new cone and track line from the National Hurricane Center for the next several days, and in the increased chance for Lee to be a dangerous Category 5 over portions of the Atlantic waters. I'll also have the latest tracks from top models without any extra images that you don't need to see, so you can get the latest take on this storm in under 10 minutes. Alright, if you're interested in this content, go ahead and like and subscribe. This storm will be a very large and dangerous hurricane very soon as it's making its west-northwestward trek past the Leeward Islands for us here and past the Antilles, but that doesn't matter. The southern flank of the storm will be grazing along that area, so we might see some gusty showers pushing on through, but we're also looking at the potential, especially for this threat being the ocean swells and some of the bigger waves that could come crashing on shore into the northern shores of these islands. So if you live along the coastline there, you might want to keep an eye on this with some weak storm surge not necessarily out of the question tropical storm force winds may graze the leeward islands in antilles you can you can see there on your screen right there that we're looking at the tropical storm force winds on the left side of your screen, hurricane force on the right side. Clearly looking like the hurricane force winds will stay well offshore, but the tropical storm force winds, and especially those gusts maybe up to 50 to 60 miles per hour, will certainly be grazing through some of these islands, and that does include places like um, Puerto Rico. The models are in solid consensus over the next several days. Things will get iffy, though, past the weekend. You can see all these models pretty much about a couple hundred mile radius at the worst for us here in terms of the disagreement in these models over the course of the next, you know, five to seven days. That's good news, but it's once it begins to make a northward jog that we start to see things kind of get confused in terms of the model. So let's talk about the GFS low-level wind patterns first. Again, this is kind of the pattern that overall we're looking for. Is this going to hit the southeast? Is this going to hit the northeast United States, or is this going to stay out to sea? I can tell you that the southeast is a pretty unlikely scenario as it looks right now with a front, so let's go ahead and play this out for you. First of all, let's see how close this, these winds get to the islands. You can see very much so grazing the northern tip of the Leeward Islands, but overall with this GFS model scenario, this is just a little bit further northward than we were seeing in the model runs yesterday which is a better case scenario, especially in terms of the wind impacts and the rain impacts from the system really overall st staying well north of the um, islands for us here. Then by the time this storm begins to move on off towards the north, this is the point where really things begin to turn in the model certainty before that in the checkmark area, but uncertainty in that X area, which is off towards the north, and unfortunately on the side, all of us here at home in the U.S. really care about, and you can see a very big growing storm developing for us here, and it looks to have its sights on the northeast, but what you don't see, at least on this lower level wind pattern, is that there's a front coming in from the north and west, and what that front is going to do is help to steer this off towards the north and east, and as I can show you this to you, you can see some of those wind impacts, yes, grazing portions of the northeast, the Cape Cod region, before this system really gets pulled away and heads on off towards the east and northeast. So let me show you what that GFS pattern looks like in terms of the upper level winds and why that steering occurred in the way it did. Again, here's that storm pushing past some of the islands for us in the Caribbean and north of that area. But as you can see, this storm begins to take that northward turn. And here we go. You can see the cold front clearly on the screen now. This is the reason it's not coming in towards places like the Bahamas and Florida, because there's definitely going to be enough wind energy in the atmosphere for it not to do that. But you can clearly make out that front stretching all the way down the east coast at this time. And really, the fact that it's already on the east coast would be very helpful at this point, because with the hurricane still several hundred miles, in fact, pretty much almost a thousand miles offshore, this would definitely not be any sort of threat at this point. But you can see how this, you know, the front continues pushing on off towards the east, really lowering the risks even more by this point, and keeping most of the wind and most of the worst of this offshore pretty much a grazing blow, just like um, portions of the Leeward Islands we'll see with this system. And again, you can see the way that front just really acts on this system, really breaks it apart and shears it apart as well as it does so. That would be a very helpful scenario. But now, the European model is showing what the GFS kind of did yesterday, and it's kind of flip-flopping, but the European model tends to be more accurate, and we need to watch this closely. Again, you can see a very grazing blow to the Leeward Islands and the Antilles for us here, as well as portions of Puerto Rico. Again, the swells are going to be a major impact in this area with some of the rip currents as well. So if you're going out and vacationing, it might not be the best time to go and, you know, enjoy the beach, and, or at least the water aspect of the beach for us here. 
You can see this storm beginning to make its northward turn. Here we, here we go towards, you know, the 10th of September onward. And here we go. You can see there's Bermuda it, just off to the east of the storm. And the European model was showing this um, actually just over to around the Bermuda and eastward area as we went through yesterday. But now it's beginning to show this much closer to land, a very concerning scenario for us. And look at the way that this would be setting up. There's not really any wind energy in the atmosphere, and I'll show that to you in just a minute, which really opens the door for the storm to head on up towards the northeast. So let me show you that wind energy that would affect it. Again, there's that front already here kind of dragging along the um, east coast, and kind of notice how it's a more of a north-south front as opposed to west-east. Rather than a wall hitting this, it would just be kind of sitting to the north of the system. And you can see how the main piece of energy with this system is really not impacting the southeast as much, according to the European model, a week or um, you know, dig of that cold front down into the east and southeast with more of that energy staying up to the northeast. But the problem is the storm is not up there yet. It's still sitting here closer to the Bahamas than Maine. And you can see as the storm begins to push on off towards the north and that system pushes off towards the north and east, that's really going to be what opens the door according to the European model if it were to continue playing out beyond the point it does. It would most likely show this coming on into the northeast, which is a, you know, a worst case scenario for this situation that we're seeing here. And again, just note how far north of the lee this front is really going to be at this point with the European model, just opening the door for even mid-Atlantic impacts out of the system. And that would be why I'm on high alert anywhere from places like Norfolk, Virginia, heading on up into the Cape Cod region, as well as up towards Portland, Maine. All these areas, you need to be watching this very closely. Now, the chance for direct impacts from Lee is at best medium on a scale of um, 1 to 5, with medium being the 2. Certainty is very low for any U.S. state directly right now. You can see, really, all the way from Florida to Maine, we have to keep a very close watch, but especially if you live here from places like Maryland, all the way up into Maine, I'd be monitoring the National Hurricane Center. I'd be monitoring this channel right here, One Nation Weather. You can subscribe and get all your notifications as I'll be posting and keeping you updated as the storm gets closer. You can see the longer the storm sits in those cooler waters, though, that you can see on your screen, the better it will be for any impacts. We saw Franklin move through this region very not very long ago, just a week or two ago. That really cooled off the waters as it sat in this region. We saw Idalia really go and sit over this area. So the water temperatures are actually below average near Bermuda, which would definitely help to weaken the storm. And that's really going to be pretty unavoidable for this system because that goes all the way back to the east coast almost, except from the Gulf Stream region. Any, you know, impact with that cooler water would at least help to weaken a storm, but if you're talking about a Category 5 storm already, then that's a pretty significant deal to begin with. So, minor to moderate impacts from Lee to the Leeward Islands. The Virgin Islands and portions of the Antilles need to be on high alert, as the storm will certainly make for choppy waters and potentially some gusty showers into the weekend. These will come indirectly as the storm will be well to the north, but the models have been continually showing a stronger storm here. Models are playing games with the track during the northward trek. The models agree that the storm will likely make a northward turn before approaching the Bahamas, which opens opportunities for a fish storm or one bringing impacts to some part of the coastline of the eastern USA or Canada. The GFS and European model continue switching opinions in the future track. What I do know is that a dangerous hurricane will be near the coast, and a dangerous hurricane of potentially still major status will be near the east coast towards September 15th through 20th time frame, because what I didn't show you, all the models are still showing a Cat 4 or 5 in terms of the intensity, so please stay updated by consulting the NHC as well as my channel for accurate information, and of course I'll have my take on it coming up in all of the videos over the coming days here, so you can go ahead and like and subscribe to get all those updates. Thank you so much for trusting me with your weather information. Here are the credits, everyone, and have a great day.